I want to continue and cover uh, another problem that's contained in this little package of problems that says managerial finance, time value of money, loan amortization, retirement, and more. And the, the problem that I've already worked for you is the Jimbo Jones loan amortization problem, which is one of those I like to, uh, it's a fairly basic problem I like to put on uh, any tests. But the next one also is a pretty uh, popular one with me, hint, hint. And that's what uh, generally is called the retirement type problem. In this setting, you've got a, a person, Freedom Butterfly. She's a free spirit from Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And um, she plans to contribute $1,000 per month into an investment account uh, expected to earn 7% annually. Upon retirement, she plans to transfer the balance to an account that earns about 5%. And assuming she believes, uh, well, she's going to earn 7%, that's already been stated. What's the maximum amount she can withdraw monthly for 30 years of retirement? Now, I like these retirement problems because they really incorporate two uh, important, well, actually, all, all four basic uh, uh, building blocks of time value of money concepts. The future value of a dollar, future value of a lump sum, present value of a dollar, future value of annuity, and present value of annuity. So let's get into this problem here. One thing you want to note is when we're dealing with retirement problems, there are two main periods. There's over here, something that's happening in the earning year. She's going to be making deposits into her retirement account. And then at retirement, she's going to be withdrawing from that fund. Now I'm showing this as the a gap, but in reality, these are the same day. This is the day that she retires. This is the day she begins retirement. But I like to separate those a little bit just to you know, emphasize that they're really two related but separate parts of the problem. So let's label this retirement. Now, whenever you read one of these problems, you're going to have information uh, about uh, what she's saving, what she wants to take out, how much she already has, how long, what rates of return she's going to earn. There's always going to be what I call a hole, and that hole is simply the place where uh, uh, the, uh, there's the question about what is it you're supposed to, to determine. In this case, when you read through it, it tells what she's going to deposit, and it asks what's the most she can withdraw monthly for 30 years of retirement. Well, the hole, that unknown, is over here. If that's the case, then you need to start over here. And uh, starting over here, we've got the future value of annuity application. And as you've seen, what I call the usable form of the model looks like this. Now I have to set that. I'm going I'm to write a little bit further over this way, give myself a little more room. OK? Again, this is what I call the usable form of the model that maintains the appearance of the mathematical formula itself for future value of annuity. But in fact, I'm going to use calculator inputs. I'm not really multiplying uh, payment times anything over here. But it, it helps me to, let's say, to maintain this framework so that I can build uh, and deal with more complex problems later on. By the way, when we get over here, we're going to be dealing with a present value of annuity application. During this period of time, she's saving up toward retirement. This period of time, that big lump sum, that snowball at the top of the hill, is the basis for her retirement withdrawals. So let's plug in what we know. As I already said, the question is, how much can she withdraw here? So I really have to start over here. And so in this case, it says she's going to deposit $1,000 per month into an investment account expected to earn 7% annually. And looks like she's going to retire in 25 years. So in this case, the payment amount is the $1,000. And since these are monthly payments, it's going to be 12 times 25. I think we've dealt with that one, that amount before. And that represents 300, or is 300 uh, 12 times 25? Yep, OK, sounds right. I, the rate of return that she expects to earn during the earning years, is 7%. So I like to represent that just like this. $1,000 per month for 300 months, and the rate of return her account will earn is 7% divided by 12. See, it's 7% per month. 
compounded monthly, that's not 7% per month, <laughs> that's 7% divided by 12 or multiplied by 112. Okay, so we can figure out then the future value, I'm gonna clear out the calculator, <laughs> see if I can hold it so maybe you can see, see this. $1,000 is the payment, 200, nope, sorry, 300 is N, and seven divided by 12 equals I compute payment. I'm sorry, I wasn't computing, that was a compute future value. Uh, I messed up. It's easy to get turned around if you're not as careful. It's late in the day. So a 1,000 payment, 300 was N, seven divided by 12, it's I compute future value. 810,072, okay? Now, by the way, I don't know that you would notice this, it's pretty small, but in fact, when I put in this as a positive amount, it gives me that as a negative value. It's just a way that, it's a quirk of the way the calculator functions, and that is that if I show a thousand dollars in positive form, the calculator says, oh, that's money coming in. And so then it will say, oh, then if you want that to come in, you're going to have to pay this amount for it. That's the present value of what you would uh, be willing to pay for that. Well, in reality, I'm paying this <laughs> in order to get this, to have that amount to withdraw in the future. And so I could have put this as a 1,000, uh, made that a negative. This would have been a positive. But anyway, it's something you'll want to know that you need to be spe very specific about cash inflows and outflows with the calculator. And, uh, but anyway, let's go with this one, 810,072. Now, by the way, we could realize right off the bat that of uh, this 810,000, a little over 500,000 was earned on that account during the uh, earning years, that is, as it was invested, because she's contributed 300 payments of 1,000. $300,000 of that money right there was put in by her. And so the other 510,072 was actually earned on the account during her uh, retirement years, excuse me, during her earning years. Now, what she ends her retirement, her earning years with, that is on retirement day, she's got $810,072 in her account. That becomes the present value of her retirement annuity. And here we want to solve for the amount that she can withdraw. So payment is our unknown here. And in, let's see, she's planning to withdraw monthly for 30 years of retirement. 30 times 12, and is 360. And you'll note here that the uh, rate of return during retirement is 5%. So 5% divided by 12. And when we solve for payment, then we get Clear out the calculator, okay, 810072. Let's show that as a negative just uh, for the fun of it. And that's a present value. In other words, it's an amount that uh, occurs at the very beginning of this term. And N is 360, 360 uh, press N. Five divided by 12 equals, there's my I. I'm solving for payment, I'm gonna have to pay better attention so I don't, uh, there we go. So I don't make mistakes. 3,000, 4,000, 348 and 0.64. I'm gonna round that off to nine. The nearest dollar is fine for these kind of calculations. So that tells me that if she contributes $1,000 per month for 25 years, 300 periods, and earns 7% compounded monthly, She'll have $810,072 at retirement. That represents her, let's say, the, the, the finished product of this part of the calculation, but it represents an input. So it's output of this, it's input to this calculation. It's what she starts retirement with. And we solved here and found out that she will be able to withdraw, withdraw $4,349 uh, at the end of each month for 30 years of retirement. Of course, the way this thing works, remember there's there's nothing left at the end of that. Um, here's how we might represent this.
It is. She makes these contributions at the end of each month with the very last one taking place here at the end of the 300th month and she ends up with the 810072 there. That's what she begins this uh, part of the problem with and we solved for the amount that she could withdraw each period and we found out it is 43.49 that is she retires on one day right here at the end of that month she withdraws 4,349 from the account that month and at the end of every month uh, for 30 years okay I'm going to stop here and maybe create another video later that takes it a little bit further than this.